So we have a new warning light on the dash of my Aston Martin Vantage. So apart from what we're used to, it is also telling me that the bonnet is open on the car. Which is a bit of a strange one to have when my car doesn't even have a bonnet, so how can it be open? But the reason it doesn't have a bonnet is because we took all of the damaged panels off in the last video in order to replace this headlight support bar which runs across the front, which was damaged ever so slightly in the accident that this car was involved in. And we did try changing this in the last video, but my look fell a little bit short and the part that we had wasn't quite threaded right, but we now have have a new one and I have that piece just here in my hand and that goes roughly around here sort of and then it's riveted into place and bonded and we can attach our headlights freely and then we can start building the car back up and I have actually got the new panels for this car secured now and they're hopefully if everything goes to plan going to be starting to go on the car later in this video and I promise you there's something special and worth sticking around for but we can't do any of that until that bar is on so that is the first job for the day so let's get on with it so this new headlight bar didn't come exactly the same as the old one so there's a little bit of modification we had to do to make it work. The first thing was putting these rivet nuts in so we could rivet on the wing adjusters so we can raise the height of the wing up and down in that area. And good news for me, it was actually almost impossible to put this on in the wrong place because there's two bolts in the centre which mount I believe to the radiator and then that kind of holds it and then you can rivet it from there. It's almost impossible to get wrong, so that's excellent news on my half. Now with the panel wand on, we could put those two bolts in to make sure it mounts in exactly the right place and then we can put two rivets in each side to make sure it's perfectly secured. And just like that, it is done. So the new headlight bar is now on and it's on better than it would have come from the factory, I think in my opinion anyway, because normally you've got one rivet each side and it's bonded, whereas now it has two each side and is bonded too. So hopefully it is unquestionably as good as new, if not slightly better. And someone did point out that I forgot to mention in the last Aston video what I paid for it, which I promise I'd tell you if the original video hit a thousand likes, which it did, so thank you very much. So for this car, I paid £16,300 all in, that's including the VAT on the auction fees, everything like that. And I think I got a pretty good deal on it, I'm not sure. Let me know down below what you think, but I'm pretty happy with paying that for this car. I think you could put it back to a standard V8 Vantage as it was before it was crashed for probably about 21, 22 all in. So I think that's a pretty good deal. But now the next job for this video, I want to do a bit of cleaning, which I wouldn't normally be able to do with all of these body panels on, but I do have to be careful when I'm doing this. So there is certain areas I don't want to get water in, i.e. inside these intakes and in these loose plugs, the ECU over there. So I'm going to cover bits off and use my brain and not spray the pressure washer on certain areas of the car, but at least try and get it looking a bit tidier before we start putting this car back together. So it just seemed wrong to me to start putting the car back together without giving those areas a little tickle and making them at least a bit cleaner than what they were because I'll be honest with you it was a bit hanging. So with a spray over the degreaser and a good thorough but careful pressure wash it was looking much much tidier and I was happy to start putting the car back together. Okay, so now that's done, it's looking much better. I've got all the wrapping pulled off and got it dried. So yeah, that's looking much smarter and I feel comfortable putting panels over the top of that, knowing that it's not filthy underneath. So next job, it's gotta be these intakes. I'm getting a little bit nervous about starting and running the car without a air filter of any sort on here because it could just suck anything in and completely write off the engine, I suppose. And it is a possibility. So I've got something different for these. Right, so. I have here a kit sold to me by another YouTuber called Detail Corpse Media. I think I've got that right. And he has done something very similar to this and rebuilt an Aston Martin Vantage. And along the way, he has developed his little kit in order to fit a set of cone filters, you know, in a, in a much better way than just bolting them on, basically. So, what we have is a couple of ProRam Ram Air filters, which are kind of the premium ones that you get, so they should last a long, long time with regular cleaning. And then he has, I think, 3D printed these kind of brackets, which go onto the original mountings for the airbox, uh, and they should clamp it very nicely, keep it secure, 
and save it rattling around and you know it just does it properly rather than just cable tying it up so I'll leave a link for this in the description if you want to grab yourself one he's not you know gave this to us for free or anything like that but I just like supporting companies which make cool little products like this so uh, yeah if you want to grab one of these check it out links below so let's see how easy it is to fit so the first thing I did was popped on the two air filters as I said these are the Pro Ram Ram air filters and you know, they're a good quality one, so we know they're going to last, we know they're going to work well. But one thing I will say is they do smell very bad, but, you know, I suppose their job isn't to smell nice. But anyway, back to the point. After I unbolted the old airbox bracket, I could fasten in this new 3D printed one, which is going to clamp that pipe in place, and we were good to go. And as you can see, the old air intake pipes now function perfectly as a cold air feed for these open cone filters. So that couldn't really get much easier. Essentially, you just bolt off the whole airbox bracket, put on the pod filter in place of the airbox, and then you're good to go. The only thing I do need to get is getting a nut and a bolt to go on this here, and a bolt to go through here, and that'll be it fastened up. But even without this little strap in place, it's still pretty solid. So. That'll just be a nice little finishing touch. So as promised in the last video, I have something very, very exciting to show you guys. And I would normally store something like this in the garage, but this is way too expensive to be stored somewhere where it could be damaged. And it's absolutely gonna transform that Vantage into something from being nice to something exceptional. So let's see what you think. So if you hadn't guessed already, what we have here stored on my mum and dad's dining room table, very kindly by them, is a nearly complete V12 Vantage body kit. So the V12 Vantage, if you don't know, obviously comes with a V12 engine, but also body-wise is much more aggressive and has lots more carbon too. So in my opinion, looks much better. But alongside that, it also comes with a much heftier price tag, being about five times more, if not even more than that, than what I spent on my V8 Vantage. So it's gonna make this look a lot more expensive, a lot more aggressive, and a lot more exotic too. So hopefully you guys approve of this. I have never honestly been more buzzing to get parts on a car. Let's do this. First up, a wing. So the first thing we had to do on the wings was transfer the old side skirt clips from the old wings over to the new ones because for some reason these ones had had them removed. So once those were swapped over, we could then start fitting them up to the car knowing that everything we needed was there. Ah, oh, my nipples! <laughs> oh. Then it was the tedious job of jiggling and fiddling and making sure that these wings fit as good as we can get them and making sure those panel gaps were nice. This is never an easy part of the job to get those shut lines nice and neat and consistent with each side and you know it's a hard part of the job so it does take some time and you can't rush it, it's just one of those things. But with the wings now fastened up, we could then start playing around with those gaps and making sure that they're as good as they can possibly be. But it does take a bit of figuring out and it does take a bit of playing around to try and get it right. We did actually end up packing out certain parts of those wings with washers which are already on the bolts when we removed the wings so that did help it you know, fall into place much nicer but once all that was done there was one final bolt in the top of the wing in the door shut which you really had to play around with with a spanner to try and get tight you know a, a very small turn at a time which did take a while three months later 464 years later And as the day started to draw to a close, we could then just throw on that front bumper quickly, which did actually go on very easily. Okay, so here is where we're up to. It's now a fresh day and we spent an extra night just lining up those wings and getting those nice and then just popping the front bumper on quickly. But there is a small problem here. And to show you that, I'm going to whip the bumper off again. So here is the old bumper and here is the new one. And side by side, there is a fair few differences between them, but the main one being that the splitter on the old bumper is non-existent and on this one we get a lovely 
carbon fiber section down there which i know if i scuff it is not going to be cheap so that is why i would like to try and retain the parking sensors that were in the original bumper and use them in the new one and on the face of it this should not be a problem because there is even parking sensors installed in my new bumper ready to go and just plug in so in order to make sure this wasn't a problem at all i bought a whole new parking sensor wiring loom because i did notice that on the old bumper there was only two parking sensors and on this one there was four so i thought get the v12 parking sensor loom and that won't be a problem but there is a problem so after inspecting the parking sensor wires and then just seeing where they ran i quickly realized that these are definitely not oem the wires actually run all the way up through the engine bay and then through the bulkhead and i'm guessing that's what the little gizmo is that we've got here at the top of the dash i think they are aftermarket parking sensors so it's not as simple as swapping these over into that bumper i don't think and also these are a bit naff to be honest with you i think it's an aftermarket system that runs into that little piece on the top of the dash and i don't think that screen's working right i don't think these are working right so for now i'm just going to put the bumper on with the sensors in but not plugged in and then see if there's anything i can do in the future to wire those original sensors using the harness that i've got and the sensors i've got into this car without having one of these dodgy aftermarket systems so for now we're going sensorless but before i put that bumper on permanently i'm gonna do something about this because this little lower oil cooler radiator thing is looking naff you can see it through the mesh grill on the bottom of the bumper and it's looking ugly as hell so i think i'm just gonna paint that black before we send that bumper on and it should look a lot smarter behind that grill so after a quick prep with a scotch pad and a screwdriver just to remove any loose debris the lower oil cooler was just about ready for a quick paint up. I'm not aiming for perfection on this. It was just something to make it a bit tidier behind that grill. So after I'd sprayed it with some etch primer and got that on some bits that I didn't want to get it on, I could then hit it with some satin black just to give it that nice clean look, which will make it almost invisible behind that lower grill. Okay, so that little oil cooler is looking so much better now. It's just painted black. You're not really going to see it now behind the mesh on the bumper. And as much as it is a bit of a pooey situation, the fact that I've got to have parking sensors on the bumper that don't work, for now, I'm just going to send it on, and then maybe we can get a specialist to look at it later and maybe make them work. So anyway, for now, bumper's getting bolted on. Let's go. So for the final time, I could send on that front bumper and how sick does it look? All that carbon fiber is going to be looking next level. So there's three bolts in the wheel arch liner area and then two in the top of the bumper. And there will be some in the under tray when that eventually does go on too. So that is the oil cooler now painted. I think that's what it is anyway, and looking much better. And the new bumper fitted in much better shape than the last one. And also with that gorgeous carbon fiber splitter down here, which is looking, I think it's much more modern and much more aggressive too. So well happy with that. And those anal people out there will be glad to know that I've replaced all of the rusty old but nuts and bolts with fresh stainless steel ones to make sure that they're gonna come in and out of the car nice and easy in the future and also look much better too. I can't believe as well how much progress we're making in this video. It feels like the Aston's all fall into place and in the last video, it seemed like we took L after L, whereas this one is strictly W's and it's, I'm feeling a lot more positive this week. So yeah, it's going well, it's going well. So the next job I wanna tackle is this brake pad wear sensor. There's two ways I could do this. I could bodge it by, you know, just soldering the wires back together or you know twisting them and taping them whatever it may be but you know you can replace the full section from here all the way to here so i think that is the best way to do it and it only costs about 30 quid so it's definitely worth doing the right way and hopefully once that's done it will get rid of the brake pad low level sensor light thing on the dash Listening back, that probably wasn't my best description of a brake pad warning light. So anyway, all we had to do was unplug it from the caliper, unplug it from the car, and then remove a few clips which hold it, the old one in place, and then plug in the new one, and it was pretty much good to go. And there we have it, super quick and easy. It just clips in here, runs up here, and then plugs in here. So the only thing I'm missing is a couple of cable ties just to tie it down to the clips, which is what it's supposed to be used with, but I haven't got any cable ties here, so that'll have to wait until another day. But for now, that is absolutely fine. It's not gonna cause any issues. It just needs pinning up. So that's another big win. So the next question is, now the car is back on the floor and also we've got that brake pad wear sensor plugged in. Is the light gonna be gone off the dash? 
I know we're gonna have a few still on there, so anyway, let's see. So we should still have a washer fluid level low, a service light, a alarm system light, and also a bonnet open warning light, but that should be it, let's see. Popper in neutral, starter up. Okay, bonnet open, alarm system service, fill washer fluid, bonnet open, and then with the handbrake off, there we go, yes, no brake warning light on anymore. So that is progress, that is another light off the dash. But we've still got that bonnet open, like maybe that's the next one to fix with that nice new V12 bonnet. But before I do that, I just wanted to pull it outside so I could take a minute to let it sink in that my Aston Martin is actually coming together and it, I literally cannot believe it. The new wings are looking sick. I really like that nice light grey colour as well. The new bumper with that carbon fibre diffuser splitter thing is looking absolutely bad boy as well. And I'm really starting to see the end of the project very quickly coming to light. And speaking of letting things sink in, we're just about to tick over 10,000 subscribers, which is absolutely incredible. I am buzzing. I cannot get over it. So thank you you very much to all of you who subscribed already and if you're not what are you playing at but i'll be honest with you i have never been as happy as what i am right now building cars like this with you guys watching and getting involved and just doing daft stuff on the internet honestly is the most fun thing i've ever done so keep watching the videos please and we can keep doing daft projects like this and hopefully trading our way up into something incredible but for now i am definitely more than happy with my aston martin vantage and I think it needs some extra bits now. I'll be honest with you, I was going to leave fitting the bonnet on this car for another video because I kind of wanted to spread out the build a little bit, but I suppose as a thank you for you guys for subscribing and ticking over that 10k mark, I suppose we've got to finish off the front end in this because it would just be... Well, it'd be a shame to leave it looking like this, wouldn't it? But quickly, before I do that, I just want to point out some of the little differences on the new panels compared to the old ones, which obviously I've already covered a little bit, but... Now they're on the car, you know, they're really more prominent. So the first thing on the wings, these little side grill bits on the old wings, these were chrome and on this, they're carbon fiber. I suppose this is the advantage of getting them off a of V12 is you get these nice little extra bits. And also again, around the front, we've got that carbon fiber splitter, which is looking absolutely bad. But I'm hoping the car doesn't ride so low that I'm gonna take that out because I can't imagine that's gonna be cheap if it does need replacing. So. Yeah, but anyway, it looks so nice. And then obviously the black painted oil cooler been up behind the mesh there. That's looking so much better. And also just down to little things, the seals on these wings are in much better condition than the ones that came off the car. They haven't got paint over them because the last front end on this car had been repainted already. So it's quite nice to see that the seals are nice and fresh too. And it's really making me think about the color of what to do with this car because I love this grey colour, I can't lie, it's really nice, it's a very typical Bond car, but it's not very crisp, it's not very in your face, so I don't know, it definitely doesn't want to be a grey colour like the bumper, this here is a dark grey, which doesn't give a nice enough contrast to the carbon fibre, so that's definitely out the window, the light grey is very nice, but you know, I like things to be very out there and very bright, so maybe the grey is not me, I, I, I can't really pick at the moment to be honest with you. But anyway, I apologise for all of my waffling. Let's get this super mad, epic, in your face, V12 carbon fiber vented bonnet on the Vantage. So as the day drew to a close, the Aston Martin was finally ready for that final piece, the missing bonnet. This car has come such a long way already, being crashed and left abandoned and then rescued by ourselves and being fixed up slowly, piece by piece. But it's only right that we put this car back to actually better than how it came out of the factory by fitting these V12 Vantage pieces. And with our guard dog watching over, we were able to take this super expensive bonnet from the dining room and fit it to the Aston Martin. So we nervously transferred that bonnet from inside the house, outdoors and onto the Aston. This bonnet is worth more than the car which we started this channel with, so you can see why our knees were weak and our arms were heavy. But fearlessly we continued and went to fasten that bonnet down onto the car with those four bolts, two in each hinges, which secure it permanently to the Aston. And just like that, it was done. So the bonnet is now on and how sick does that look? It's such an improvement over 
the standard one, and those carbon fiber vents are just popping. I'm sorry about the lighting, but how sick is the Aston Martin Vantage looking? That bonnet just makes the world of difference. It turns it from something that's classy into something that's aggressive, and to be honest with you, that's what I like in a car, and it's looking so angry right now. Obviously, there's still lots to do. We've got to get the headlights in, we've got to get a grill, and make a decision on what grill we want, and also make a decision on colour. And then finally, the wheel arch linings and a few other little bits and bobs along the way, but I'm chuffed with that. And also buying this bonnet has done me a favor and given me back the Aston Martin badge that those plebs stole off my original bonnet. But I think it's safe to say we have absolutely smashed it in this video. We've got the headlight bar on, the full front end on bar, the headlights. We've got the new brake pad wear sensor, the new airbox cone filter things. So we are making some spot on progress. But feel free to let me know in the comment section down below what color you think I should do the Aston Martin because I cannot make my mind up. I really like this gray. The lighter grey that's on the wings, that gives a nice contrast to the carbon, but it is not quite in your face enough, and the bumper definitely isn't right because it's too dark, and then the bonnet is, nah, it's not right. We need something bright, something in your face. But unfortunately, that is it for this time. If you are new here, make sure you're subscribed. We've now hit 10,000 subscribers, so thank you very much for that. Make sure you like the video, and I'll catch you next time.